Ladies and gentlemen, hello, and once again coming to you from One Take Studios, which looks an awful lot like my dining room table today. I want to give you a little bit of a review for domain and range. I know it's a topic that a lot of people don't have sitting very well in their brain. It often falls back out again. So domain and range, just by way of review, domain refers to our x values, or our inputs for our functions, and the range would be then the y values. So domain and range, x and y. The more difficult part to actually comprehend is what that means in terms of functions or graphs in this case. I'm actually approaching this from a graphing view because for me it's easier to see than it is to try to understand it abstractly. So if I've got the equation y equals x squared, basic equation, basic function, this is the parent function for a parabola. It's got the vertex at the origin, both sides go up, there we go, joy and happiness. Domain. If domain are the x's, and this is my x-axis, what I'd like to ask myself is this. Does this graph continue moving towards the right? And while I look at it, if I was going to describe this in general, I would say that it's going up. But while it's going up, is it not also moving to the right? Yes. Is there any reason that this would ever stop moving to the right? No. So since this is going to continue moving to the right forever this direction, nothing's going to stop it. I have half of my idea in my mind. What about the left? This graph, does it continue to move to the left? Again, it does appear to move upward, but as it's moving up, it is also moving to the left. Is there anything that would stop it? Is there anything at all that would stop this thing to keep it from moving to the left forever and ever and ever? No. Since there's nothing stopping this graph on the right, Nothing stopping this graph on the left. That means that on the right, all the positive x values, I can put in whatever positive value I want, and it will have a y value that goes with it. Also, if I plug in something from the left, any of the negative values, I can square a negative value, and it will also have a value. There's nothing preventing me from using any number along this number line. Therefore, I would say that my domain is going to be all real numbers. I'm going to start by writing this in a way that you like, and then I'm going to write it in a way that I like. All real numbers for my domain. The fancy way of writing that you should get used to seeing, just so that it doesn't give you a heart attack. Domain is the set of numbers such that, well, if we're talking about a set of numbers, we need set notation. And it's domain, so I'm talking about x's. So all of the x's such that. Please notice what I said when I wrote that down slash. That is not an operation. That's such that. I want all the x's such that. Well, what can x be? x can be any real number. So x is a member of. x is a member of. It looks like a kind of a cross between a c and an e. That's intentional. That is a symbol that means is a member of or is an element of. The set of real numbers. That is a capital R double stemmed. That indicates the set of real numbers. So if I said that domain is all real numbers, this says the same thing but in a more professional format. So the x is such that x is a member of the set of real numbers. Lovely. So what about the y's? What about the range? Well, again, here's my y-axis. Check this out. Starting at the origin and going up. Are there y-values all the way up here? Up, 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 up. Yes. We already said that the ends of the graph go up. Is there anything that will stop this graph from going up? No. Therefore, all of our positive y-values are good to go. What about going down? Does this graph, does this parabola at any point go down? No. So, what's its lowest point? Here's zero. Do we have anything below zero? We do not. So since this is a parabola, because it has a vertex, it turned around and went back up again, we have no values down here. So I don't want to say all real numbers, because that's not true. The only numbers that actually work are zero and the positive numbers, and I've got no part of my graph extending below the axis here, so I've got no negative y values. What is that going to look like? Well, I'll talk you through while writing the fancy method. But again, we're talking about range. So R for range, the set of numbers, the squiggly brackets, that's set notation. I want all Y values such that, again, Y values such that. I don't want to say that the Ys are all real numbers, I do, so I don't want to use this. I want to say all the Y values start at 0 and go higher. 
So I'm looking for all the y's that are greater than or equal to 0. And that's how I'd write that in a more professional format. Range are the set of y's such that y is greater than or equal to 0. And this would be my domain and range for this particular function. All right. How does that change here? This is a cubic graph. This is a quadratic graph for a, qu sorry, bleh, a quadratic equation and a parabola is what we get for an image to go with a quadratic equation. This is a cubic equation. I personally am, am saddened by the fact that <sighs> cubic graphs don't have their own name, like this is a parabola, so what the heck is this? I fixed that problem. You're welcome. I have named this graph. I call this graph the Travolta. Seriously, have you ever seen John Travolta in his 70s dance moves? This is what the man looks like. One arm up, one arm down. I'm, I'm completely serious with this. I have a photograph where we took and we put a cubic graph up against the man's arms. Perfect cubic. So this is a Travolta because I said so. <laughs> So what about my domain and range? Check this thing out because it's not the same as the last graph. This thing is going to the right, to the right, to the right, nothing stopping it, to the left, nothing stopping it, keep going to the left, going up, nothing is stopping it, going down, nothing is stopping it. There's nothing stopping this graph. There's no holes, there's no boundaries, this thing just kind of keeps going forever and ever. What does this mean? We should fear and love God such that the domain is again going to be the set of numbers, x, such that x's are a member of the set of real numbers. Because it goes forever to the right, goes forever to the left, I can cube positive numbers, I can cube negative numbers, nothing's gonna stop it. But in this case the range happens to be the same. Because it continues to go up, because it continues to go down. If I cube a positive, I get a positive. If I cube a negative, I get a negative. There's nothing stopping this positive or negative. So again, the set of numbers y such that y this time is also a member of the set of real numbers. If you wanted to tell me that domain and range are both all real numbers, you may do so. Because it's true. But again, this is the writing that I would like you to start seeing and getting used to so that you do not have heart palpitations if it shows up in a textbook. All right, now I want to see what this would look like from a graphing perspective here for a moment. Let's check this out, right? There we go, that's what I'm looking for. All right, I've already graphed for us the equation f of x equals the square root of x. Pausing for a moment, what does this equation graph look like? Huh. Turn your head 90 degrees to the right. Pretend you're a cat or a dog looking at something funny. Doesn't it kind of look like half of a parabola? Wait a minute, that would actually make sense, wouldn't it? Because x squared makes a parabola, and so the square root gives us half of a parabola. Huh, I like that. Why is there no bottom half? Why is this piece down here missing? Well, if I take the square root of, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, if I take the square root of 4, what do I get? 2. If I take the square root of 4, do I also get negative 2? Not under these circumstances. Not when the radical is part of the original equation. So consequently, because of the square root, we are only generating the positive half of this parabola and not the negative half. So what's my domain? Starts here at zero, goes to the right, goes to the right, goes to the right, forever and ever, doesn't stop. What about to the left? There's nothing here. I have no values here. So my domain are the set of numbers x such that x is greater than or equal to 0. y's, same story. Here's my y-axis starting at 0. It goes up, goes up, goes up, goes up. And again, it looks like it's heading more to the right, but as it goes to the right, it is also moving upward. And so my y values are great here in the positive side. What about my negative y values? There is no piece of graph below this, so my y values will also be just the values that are greater than or equal to zero. Let's mess with this, shall we? I think we should mess with this. Um, let's go to, I'm going to hit the tab key, that's going to bring my equation back up here, and I want to go up and edit. So I'm going to duck back under the square root sign and do a minus two. Now, pausing and thinking about translations for a moment, is that H or K, H or K? Ooh, that's H. And if it means a change horizontally and, and 
minus 2 is 2 to the, try to guess, left or right. Which one are you going to see? Enter. Hopefully you said to the right. There we go. We still have our half a parabola, but now it starts here. What does this change? Well, okay, so now my x's start at 2 and go up. Do I have any x's that are less than 2? I do not. So my range are all of the x values that are greater than or equal to 2. My y values, however, are unchanged. They still start at 0 and go up. I have no negative y values on this one. So by changing x, it changes the, sorry, not by changing x, by changing h in there with the x, that changes our domain. What if I go back again, hitting tab, going back up, let's edit. What happens if I put the minus 2 on the outside? Do you know? You should know. What happens if I do this? What's going to happen to my graph? Project, think, what do you think, what do you think? Is that what you were guessing? Goes down to, hopefully, because now the minus 2 is outside of the square root, and it's going down to, this is k this time instead of h, which means my x's, my domain, hmm, here's my x-axis, I've got nothing below 0, everything is 0 or, or higher. So my domain of the x is greater than or equal to 0. What about my range? This time I messed with k. Messing with k does what? Moves it down. So look at this. Now my lowest y value is not 0, but negative 2. So all of my y values are greater than or equal to negative 2, and nothing drops below negative 2. Domain and range. Let's do one more edit because it sounds like fun. Again, I'm going to hit tab and go up and play with this. I'm going to take the minus 2 off the end, and now I am going to go out front and put a negative sign out front. Ladies and gents, tell me what you think. Think, think. Hmm. This is a reflection, right? Which way? Which way is it going to flip? What do you got in mind? Ah, did you get that? Because we're talking this is flipping everything, all the positive y values now negative y values, so we're flipping it over the x-axis. But now, what does this do to my domain and range? Domain, x's, 0 and higher, so great. Set of numbers, x, such that x's are greater than or equal to 0. But what about my range? Instead of starting at 0 and going up, this time we're starting at 0 and going down. So my range is going to be the set of numbers less than or equal to 0. All right, follow the graph. I find that to be the most helpful thing, probably. Okay, and if in doubt, ask questions.